Okay, so I've made two changes really. First, I've removed the provisioner block from under this connection block here in the resource definition for our web1 droplet. I've also created two of these now, so web1 and web2. The other thing that's changed is we're not provisioning it with a provisioner block anymore. We're actually passing user data. So if you've ever heard of user data or cloud init, it's the name of the daemon that runs it. Um, it's a common thing on across many cloud providers. That's basically a way for once you provision a resource, in this case a droplet, once that resource comes up, you can basically pass it some user data in the form of a script that further uh, provisions it, configures it, does whatever a script can do. So this is using this file function, which you haven't seen before. But don't worry about the syntax too much. Actually, I think some of the string interpolation syntax and the quoting is a little bit, it's maybe the most confusing thing about Terraform. So just copy this for now. You'll get used to it after a while. I'm not going to go into it too deeply. Uh, but we're just looking up this file and then passing it as this argument. And that file is basically a fancier version of the, the quote unquote script we were running in that provisioner, which was just an array of commands that we had before. So we're still doing an update and an Nginx install, but then we actually interact with the DigitalOcean instance metadata API, where we actually hit this on a special IP. This is not like a real routable IP. And we grab the host name. We store it in this variable. Same thing for public IP. And then we echo some stuff, including that host name and IP address, into the default Nginx welcome page, right? So we're overwriting that welcome page content that you saw before. So now when we do another Terraform plan, it runs, it checks the state, and it says two to add, one to destroy. Our configuration for these has changed. So in the, in the true sort of 12-factor uh, app style, all of this infrastructure is cattle. It's not a pet. We're not going to try to like massage this into shape. This is not a configuration management tool. That's not what Terraform is. Terraform is an amazing provisioning and infrastructure state and change management tool. It is not Ansible. It's not Chef. It's not Puppet. So let's look at what's going to happen. Uh, it looks at min memory state. It looks at state in DigitalOcean. And you can see that it's going to do some creating and then it's also going to destroy and then create. So in other words, replace the web one droplet. We're also gonna create the second web droplet and that looks pretty good to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and say apply. And it's gonna ask me, are you sure? Because you know we're straight up gonna destroy some stuff on this one. And now we're creating one droplet. We're still destroying another droplet. The really nice thing about Terraform is it knows what order to do this in, right? So it knows that it can parallelize the destruction of one and the creation of the other droplet. Um, so those, you can see those happening at the same time. It starts the destroy, it starts one create. Once the first destroy is complete, it then recreates that droplet. It parallelizes what it safely can and no more. And you can see we've got web one and web two. Okay, now this is about to start looking like a real project. So we're defining another resource here. This is again a DigitalOcean droplet. We are calling it HAProxyWeb. This is gonna be a load balancer. We're again using the same image, giving it a decent name, putting it in a region. All this stuff is basically the same, including the connection, but we're gonna have multiple provisioners for this resource. So we're gonna use remote exec. You already know this one, it's just uh, a few commands. I, I want to explain this. Occasionally these instances come up so fast that um, some of the files like aren't 100% set up before the provisioner runs. So I'm adding a sleep 25. Probably a sleep 5 would have been plenty. But I was having some weirdness with uh, apt-get update where like I was getting like a repository error. It's just sort of things being up before they're really ready. Uh, I tend to blame systemd when this stuff happens. But it just does another HA proxy install. Totally self-explanatory. Then a second provisioner is going to run. This is a different type of provisioner than you've seen. There are a few different kinds. I just suggest that you read up on a few. A lot of them do come in handy. This is the file provisioner. So what I'm doing is I've got a template file, which I'll also explain in a moment, that I'm using for the HAProxy configuration, right? So I set up HAProxy. I shove a config file in there, but it needs some values, right? Because I need to know about my backends. And then I'm going to restart 
HA proxy, right? So then it should just be running. So let's look at that config file. So what I'm doing here is load balancing between two different backend servers. But here's really all that matters. These are the two web servers that we are managing. Server web one, and we need a variable here, right? We actually need the IP of these backend servers. Now, how do we get it in here? You can see we're using the string interpolation syntax. So dollar sign and then curly brackets around some variable value. That's how it works in Terraform. It probably seems pretty familiar from things like Python and Ruby. How do we actually get this in as a template? Well, there's sort of this intermediate step where we define a template resource that we can actually use. So I've created templates.tf. This is slightly advanced. You don't have to do this, but it's something that's going to be really useful if you're working with Terraform a lot. It's a resource like anything else, except it's, it's not like a DigitalOcean plugin or an AWS plugin or whatever. It's data. So that's local data that we have here uh, while running Terraform. The resource is a template file, and again, it has a name. So it's the same sort of resource definition, it's just a very different kind of resource. It's not a virtual machine or a firewall rule or a database, it's just data that we have access to. Now, we have this template that we're defining, uh, which, is, which is required for a template file resource, and we're basically passing it the path to our file. Now I've used this path module thing because technically we're inside of a Terraform module. If you want to call this in a more advanced way from maybe another module, um, then you got to do this. But for now, you can pretty much ignore the syntax and just focus on it's in the config directory. And this is what it's called HA proxy CFG TPL for template. Now, the vars or variables that this template requires are there's really just two web one private IP and web two private IP. We have to pass those in manually as we define this template resource. So these just, you won't just like get looked up if Terraform knows about them, they'll get shoved in there. No, anything that's in a template file has to be explicitly passed in as vars. So we're defining them here to make them accessible inside that template file. And these are the resources or the resource attributes that we are putting in there. DigitalOcean droplet, so that goes in Terraform's like, oh, uh, let me check my DigitalOcean droplets, and it finds these resource definitions, one and two, right? And then this is the name. So we say we want web one, and it goes, oh, web one, uh, yeah, and it goes web two, uh, yep, here it is. And then we say we want the IPv4 address private. Now you'll notice we didn't like define that here. That's something that just dynamically happens. If you go back to the droplet docs, you can see that this is how you create a droplet. These are the arguments you can give it. But then these attributes, once it's created, these are the things that you can ask about it. So once Terraform knows about this resource type, you can look up the IPv4 address or the private IPv4 address. So this is basically looking up what Terraform knows about. It's a droplet named web1 and the attribute I want to access on it with this dot notation, these dots, is the IPv4 address private. IPv4 address private. So that'll get us the private networking IPv4 address. Now I've launched these with private networking true so that we have that. You can see that in the resource definition here. Private networking is true. So we can actually, we can use that. Okay, that explains that. I'm just gonna run through it real quick again from the top. This is another droplet resource. We're calling it HA proxy web. It's a load balancer. There's a bunch of provisioners that are going to run after it spins up. Once the droplet is created, we're going to install HA proxy. We're going to do this file provisioner, which grabs content from a rendered template. So this is just that template resource data, the template file. It's the HA proxy conf template file. Again, this resource access. And we want the rendered version of that. So actually, please template it out for us and give us the results with you know, those IP addresses already in there. And you're going to write it to Etsy HA proxy, HA proxy CFG. And then you're going to restart HA proxy. So that happens with this. And that happens with this config file where we actually pass those values in. I know it's a little bit complicated, but this sort of like three step thing is going to be really, really common for using Terraform in general because you'll be using a lot of template files. So let's do another Terraform plan and just see what's going to happen here. 
I wanted to show you this plugin reinitialization required. Please run Terraform init. So this already basically tells you what to do, but here's the issue. We never installed the template provider because now we're using templates. It's a new thing. Terraform is very modular, so we can just do another Terraform init. This is the kind of error we would have seen if we had not run Terraform init before the first time we used the DigitalOcean provider. So it's fine. We just run it again. Terraform downloads the right thing, does the right thing, and now we can run plan. Okay. So you can already see one to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. That sounds right. It sounds like it's going to keep our web servers and just add the HA proxy server. Uh, this seems fairly straightforward. It's just a regular instance. It's really the provisioners and the uh, templating where the magic happens. So let's just run this. Terraform apply. Yes, we want to continue. Hit enter. If you're a developer, if you're a sysadmin, this is what you want infrastructure management to be like. You run a command. You check to make sure it's going to do the right thing. Then you apply it and go have a coffee while this thing spins up an entire VPC full of infrastructure or a bunch of object source stuff or 20,000 droplets if you want. There we go. We're done. So Terraform's gone and done this. Let's make sure that the instance was provisioned here. Grab its IP address. And now technically, if everything works, this thing should be load balancing between the droplets and it looks like it is so you can see that hello from droplet web one if i reload the page hello from droplet web two different ip addresses i'm just hitting reload over and over and over again yay this is load balancing this is how it's supposed to work it's lovely it's working this is a project you just did the project it's amazing congratulations so with very little work um and you know pretty minimal configuration. You just created actual resilient web infrastructure uh, that can take a beating. You can hit this with a whole bunch of requests and it's going to do just fine. So at this point, you know pretty much everything you need to know to get started with and be productive with Terraform. But stick around for just one last video and I'll give you a couple tips and tricks that I've learned over the years which are going to make your experience much, much easier and more smooth.